Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the Hot Rod Workshop. Today, we're gonna discuss the home-built power bead roller. So this is the old bead roller that I use here in the shop. The bead rolling tool on the top is an old Woodward hand crank that has been modified to work with a DC motor. It is mounted onto a two by two box frame that I built. Being is that it is a older Woodward hand crank unit, uh, the dies were a standard size. Uh, so the shafts had to be turned down in order to accept the later style dies that Eastwood provides, which are very nice dies for forming and bead rolling steel and aluminum. The motor that I used is a Dayton 1LPY1. It is a 90 volt DC motor that is attached to a 37 to one ratio gear reducer. Uh, it's also reduced a bit with the chain setup I have in the back here. These are all source parts from McMaster car. The nice thing about this particular model Dayton motor is it incorporates a bridge rectifier on the back uh, included with a potentiometer for speed control. On the front side of the frame, we have a few pins in line to store some of the extra dies. Now I added this collar on the top shaft. It is just a simple collar for a one inch shaft. The set screw is a 5 24. So I just threw in a stainless bolt, probably about three and a half inches long with a cupped washer and a spring. And what this does is this will assist in removing the top die automatically just by turning the crank so I can remove the material after I'm done forming it. Now on the lower right hand side, we have the power distribution box. So you'll notice right away that there is very little real estate in this box. Uh, that is because this is a McMaster car box. It's cast aluminum. It costs about 50 bucks. No big deal. You go one size up from this box and you're looking at 150 bucks, maybe even more. So I think this will do just fine. So I'll try to break this down as to what's going on here. It is a little crazy. It's a bit of a back and forth, but it keeps things a little bit neater and more consolidated. So I got my power cord of 120 volts AC heading into the box, heading right back out again to the momentary switch that is a foot pedal. Once the other end of that black lead heads back into the box, the power leads head outside of the box and head to the bridge rectifier. So let's go take a look at that. So the AC power at 120 volts heads into this bridge rectifier and the bridge rectifier converts it into DC voltage. And from here, we head back over to the aluminum box. Now that we have DC power back into the box, we can utilize the switch to reverse the polarity of the DC voltage heading to the motor. You reverse the polarity, you change the direction. Now we have a forward and reverse for the bead roller. Now compared to other bead rollers, there is a bit of a give and take. This is still considered one of the cheaper units. Really the only big flaw I see in this style of bead rollers is the flex. You'll see in previous videos that are, there is quite a bit of flex in the C channel section of these machines. 
if it is a big problem, you can always take a piece of angle or a C channel or box tubing or something. If you don't have a material that's going to take up too much of that throat, you can clamp a piece of stiff material closer to the end of the dies to try and keep that flex from occurring. Uh, another thing is some nicer machines have the potentiometer built into the pedal. The pedal I have is just a momentary on-off switch and I have a potentiometer on the bridge rectifier itself. I don't really see that being too big a problem to be totally honest with you. My particular opinion, I'd rather have the potentiometer on the motor than on the pedal. Reason being is if I have a large panel or something a little oblong hard to hold onto and I accidentally push too hard on that pedal and it just takes off and I, I, I lose my position. I mean, it's a one and done scenario. I'd rather have a slow and steady process that I know is going to maintain than have the ability to speed up. That's just me. I don't know, I kind of find it fulfilling to be able to upgrade an old machine like this and put some power behind it and make it a lot easier to use. Uh, this one is a, it's a, like anything else. It's a constant project. I'm always looking for ways to upgrade it and change it and make it better. You know, I'm always testing things to see if there's room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. And um, I'm also currently working on a shrinker stretcher stand. This is on its way. I got to adjust the feet a little bit and make some minor adjustments, some gussets here and there, some adjustable feet because this concrete floor is a mess. But we'll make another video on that one once it's uh, ready for paint. And I'm thinking the same championship white as this one and some just throw some stripes on it maybe. I don't know. We'll see. So yeah, it's my power bead roller. Works pretty well. The material that I put through it, a lot better than hand cranking, let me tell you. Thanks for watching.